explore the enchanting 1952 movie about the famous storyteller Hans Christian Andersen. Step into a world filled with delightful tales and unforgettable characters. Beyond just fairy tales, brace yourself for a mix of emotions as you experience the amusing, surprising, and sometimes heart-wrenching moments on screen. Have you ever felt a connection to Hans Christian Andersen's timeless stories? Or is there a character from the movie that has stuck with you? Share your special memories and personal experiences with us in the comments below. We're eager to hear from you. Stay tuned for more interesting insights and surprises on the way. Share your most treasured memory or personal experience with this movie in the comments below. The 1952 movie about Hans Christian Andersen gained a lot of attention when it came out. People really liked how it showed the famous Danish author's life. His timeless stories like The Little Mermaid and The Ugly Duckling were a big hit with audiences and made the movie even more popular. When it was released, the movie got good reviews because it told a heartfelt story and had catchy songs. People loved how it showed Anderson's creative mind and his journey to becoming a well-known storyteller. The movie didn't just stay on the screen. It inspired other versions, new adaptations, and lots of stuff you could buy, which kept Anderson's amazing stories alive for a long time. People made plays, cartoons, and TV shows based on Anderson's stories. These adaptations honored his memory and introduced his tales to new audiences around the world. Lots of things were sold because of the movie, like books, toys, and things to collect. People really liked these items, showing how much the movie left its mark on pop culture. In short, the 1952 movie about Hans Christian Andersen had a big impact. It inspired new versions, things to buy, and kept his wonderful stories alive. It's a movie that continues to enchant audiences, making sure Andersen's stories are enjoyed by many generations to come. Nancy Kilgaz debuted in the movie, capturing audiences worldwide with her graceful presence. Samuel Goldwyn, the producer, had a big vision for the film. He wanted to mix Andersen's story with Disney's animation magic. They hoped this combo would make the movie unlike anything seen before. The movie's main song, Thumbelina, became a classic tune that stayed with people long after the movie ended. It was so good that it got nominated as one of America's top 100 movie songs in 2004 by the American Film Institute. This nomination showed how much the movie and its music stuck in people's minds. As people watched the movie, they felt like they were in Anderson's imaginary world. The cool settings and lovable characters came alive on screen. Nancy Kilgaz, playing Thumbelina, really brought the character to life with her emotional acting. She showed the strength and hope that made Anderson's story timeless. In the end, Thumbelina keeps inspiring people with its storytelling power and Anderson's timeless tales. Through movies like this, people of all ages keep falling in love with the story of a tiny girl with big dreams. And that's how the story goes on, inspiring people with its message of bravery, love, and the human spirit. In the 1952 movie Hans Christian Andersen, Pat Tribble made his debut while it also marked the first appearance of Dolores Durrett on the big screen. Additionally, it served as the final film for Marlena Tepel. The movie introduces viewers to the life and imagination of Anderson, highlighting his journey as a storyteller and poet. Tribble's and Durrett's performances add depth to the narrative, while Tepel's role contributes to the film's ensemble cast. Hans Christian Andersen offers a glimpse into the creative mind behind timeless tales such as The Little Mermaid and The Ugly Duckling, providing audiences with a window into the world of one of history's most celebrated storytellers. In 1966, the US TV premiere of this film aired on ABC TV, hosted by Victor Borge. The film's runtime of two hours led ABC to extend the broadcast with hosting sequences instead of cutting it for commercials. Eastern Airlines sponsored the telecast and offered an album of Anderson stories narrated by Borge on American Decker Records. Coincidentally, the studio cast album of songs from the film featuring Danny Kaye and Jane Wyman was also released by American Decca. Although Danny Kaye's studio album of Frank Loesser's songs has remained available, the original soundtrack score from the Goldwyn Vaults has not been released as of 2019. Zizi Jean Mare and Roland Petit, who choreographed the film and appeared in the Little Mermaid Ballet, married in 1954. They continued to collaborate on ballets until Petit's death in 2011. The movie Hans Christian Andersen from 1952 adapts some of Andersen's best-known stories into songs and ballet sequences. It subtly references other tales too, like The Little Match Girl and The Steadfast Tin Soldier. 
Danny Kaye's rendition of eight songs from the Frank Loesser score reached number one on the Billboard album chart in January 1953. Michael Powell was considered to direct and Gary Cooper was sought for the title role by Samuel Goldwyn. No Two People, a delightful patter duet, was recorded with Jane Wyman joining Danny Kaye. In the movie, the Danish capital is pronounced Copenhagen, which some Danes disliked as it was the German pronunciation. Zizi Jean Mayer made her debut in the film. During the 1940s to late 1950s, Hughes Tool Company ventured into the film industry and owned RKO companies, including RKO Pictures, RKO Studios, RKO Theaters, and the RKO Radio Network. Howard Hughes gained control of RKO in 1948 and was impressed by the ballet film The Red Shoes. He wanted his own ballet company and contracted Roland Petit and his ballet de Paris de Roland Petit for film assignments. The dance troupe, including Zizi Jean Mayer, came to Los Angeles but became mutinous due to lack of work. Eventually, they were cast in Hans Christian Andersen, with Petit heavily involved in its creative aspects. The film's director, Charles Vidor, worked alongside Petit, who was instrumental in creating its visual magic. In the film, Betty Udy made her debut. To add magic to the Little Mermaid ballet, Hans imagines it instead of presenting it as a real ballet. This decision allowed for creative camera tricks and impossible stage actions. Moira Shearer was meant to portray Doro, the prima ballerina, but she had to withdraw due to pregnancy. These changes contributed to the film's unique charm and creativity. In 1941, Frances Howard, wife of producer Samuel Goldwyn, discovered Danny Kaye during a Broadway scouting trip. Kaye, known for his natural dark brown hair, was signed by Goldwyn after screen tests. Francis insisted on changing his hair color to red-headed strawberry blonde. Despite this, Goldwyn's press agent maintained that Kay's hair was its natural color. The movie underwent significant editing, reducing its runtime by 25 minutes for broadcast. The original film runs a full two hours. This film marked the conclusion of Goldwyn's distribution deal with RKO, a partnership that spanned 11 years, starting with The Little Foxes in 1941. In summary, Francis Howard's Broadway discovery, Danny Kaye, underwent a visual transformation for his Hollywood debut. The movie, with a runtime cut for broadcast, marked the end of a long-standing distribution pact between Goldwyn and RKO, concluding a prolific 11-year collaboration. In the 1952 movie Hans Christian Andersen, Joan Haig made her debut. She entered the cinematic world through this film, marking her first appearance on the big screen, Haig's performance in the movie showcased her talent and potential as an actress, laying the foundation for her future career in the industry. Her portrayal in Hans Christian Andersen contributed to the overall charm and appeal of the film, adding depth to the ensemble cast and enhancing the viewer's experience. Haig's debut in the movie remains a notable milestone in her acting journey, setting the stage for her future accomplishments in the world of cinema.